Hey guys, quick video today. I recently made some upgrades to the Dig Octa brain board and released a new version of it. While main functionality stays the same, I thought it'd be nice to do a bit of an update video and combine it with some special power supply you can turn on and off without using a relay board when using a Dig Octa. Let's dive into it. So, let's first take a look at what the Dig Octa system is again, then quickly go through the changes, and then take a quick look at how you can make a setup with two power supplies so that the Dig Octa can turn off the main LED power supply without even needing a relay board. The Dig Octa system is coming up on about two years ago that it was introduced as a complete from the ground up design system for driving addressable LEDs. The Dig Uno and Dig Quad have always kept their ties to their DIY legacy, and up until this day, there are updated DIY designs available if you want to build one of the boards yourself. The Dig Octa, however, was designed without the limitations that making it DIY buildable brings with it. And I designed it to be a modular and flexible system to which I can introduce various new boards in the future. The Dig Octa system is split between brain boards and power boards. The brain boards do everything to do with driving the data side of digitally adjustable LEDs, while the power boards in turn do everything related to powering those same LEDs. Combined, they can be stacked to form a complete controller doing data and power, with flexible parts that can be scaled to whatever is needed for that specific setup. As I mentioned, this year we will have an updated brain board, but we're also getting a new power board. For the brain board 32.8L, we've gone from the V1 and an intermediate V1 R2 version to now the first V2 version of the brain board. This version is a partial redesign, changing a lot of traces and tracks internally, but functionality-wise, things mostly stay the same, except for a few features. The flash memory of the ESP32 WRU module has been upgraded from 4 megabytes to 16 megabytes, allowing for larger programs and storage for applications that might require it. The temperature sensor has been removed and moved to an add-on board that is sold separately. Partly this is because on the last batch we had an issue with the temperature sensors, so I've decided to make it an external plugin that can be plugged into the new version of the Dig Octa, but also for the new AN Penta Mini, or for instance the soon releasing AN Penta Plus and the upcoming AN Penta Deca. It's also designed in such a way that next to the internal socket, it also has Stemma QT connectors and can be connected to any board with I2C available externally. This has another advantage, and that is that the pull-up resistors for these I.O. lines are removed, and thus you can use them for something else, if so desired. Something else that's new is that there is now a jumper for the SD card slot, which allows you to disable power to it and its resistors. The GPIO lines used for that SD card slot now also have pin headers that can be used to connect other accessories including the most requested feature, a digital microphone. As I mentioned to start with, there are more internal changes in regards to track layout and such, but that isn't really interesting, I think. It's basically been overhauled and improved in lots of ways. I have some more changes I want to make in the future, but those require more testing first. As always, I will try and keep improving my hardware where I can. The Dig Octa Brainboard 328L V2 still remains the same price, although now it doesn't have the onboard temperature sensor. The upgraded ESP32 module and some of the other changes offset those costs pretty much, so I can't really do much on the price. Then I hinted towards a new board in the Dig Octa lineup coming out soon, and that's a 48 volt compatible power board. Because the way the system has been designed, I was able to design a Power 5 HV, which stands for high voltage, 
as it will be called, and it can be natively used with 36 volt and 48 volt addressable LEDs, or like uh, strips or pucks or whatever. It's fully stack compatible and can be added and used in combination with any of the DIG Octa boards, no matter the version. So that will give a great and easy to use solution for anyone who wants to build a setup with these newer high voltage LED strips, pucks, etc. Once the board is released, it will get its own pages and video, so make sure to stay subscribed for that. The second part of this video is about power saving for digitally addressable LEDs. As most know by now, even when a digitally addressable LED is producing no light, as in it's off, it still uses power. Those little ICs in there, they remain powered on. To combat this, the DIG Octa system has been designed to allow various simultaneous inputs so that big LED power supplies can be turned off when the LEDs are off. But the board stays online and reachable to manage this. Normally, you'd have to add a relay board in front of the big LED power supply while keeping the board online with, say, a second power supply like a simple phone charger using its USB-C input port. And while this works fine, it involves messing with AC lines and extra hardware is needed. Recently, I ordered a Meanwell RSP15012 power supply, which has an interesting built-in feature called on-off control. Turns out this works perfectly with the built-in relay circuits or relay trigger circuits on the DIG Octa brain board, and thus allows you to turn on or off this Meanwell power supply without needing a relay board, just two little wires. When turned off, it uses only about one watt on the AC side, so that's great. To set this up and connect it, uh, I bodged it together with some DuPont wires because I don't have the correct JST XHP2P connector. And while this works, I'd recommend just getting a pre-made cable from AliExpress if, you're, if you know you're gonna do this. Uh, links for that will be in the video description. The way to connect it is really simple. From the relay three pin, output terminals, you connect ground to minus on the PSU, and you connect the trigger pin to the plus of this little connector here. The way it works is that if the power supply senses zero volt, so pull to ground, the PSU is on. And if it senses above four volt, the power supply turns off. This works perfectly with the circuitry designed on the DIG Octa brain board, since it always makes 5 volt, even if you have 12 volt or 24 volt LEDs. So if you're looking to build a new setup for LEDs, consider the DIG Octa. And if you do, the RSP series from Meanwell might be interesting just because of this feature. Do take note that only the RSP, RSP 75, 100, 150 and 500 models have this function. Other models either don't have it or function in a different way that is not compatible. A second thing I quickly wanted to highlight today is about the external antenna. I sometimes get the question about needing a longer pigtail or a better antenna. This isn't a problem at all. What we include is some decent hardware, but if you need something different, a quick order on AliExpress will get you a much longer pigtail, for instance, or this much bigger and thus more sensitive antenna, if with the included one, reception still remains spotty. I will have some links again in the video description if you've been looking for these. Uh, on a technical note, the ESP32 has an IPEX connector and the pigtails and antennas we deliver are RP SMA. And well, that's it already for this video. I just wanted to make a nice little update about the DIG Octa system changes that have been happening and new additions that are coming soon. And hey, this little trick with those RSP power supplies is also very convenient to know about when you're building a setup. Let me know down in the comments what you think of this feature and if you actually watched the video this far. <laughs> That's it for now. More news and releases coming soon. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye-bye.